This video is going to show some of the many areas where the Ravens defense is just leaking all over the place. Uh, I call it an identity crisis because not only are we getting beat on a lot of pass routes, intermediate pass routes, screens, which has always been a problem, we're getting beat up by the run. But anyway, the first couple plays I'm going to show is, is the screen to Jonathan Taylor for a touchdown. It looks like man free to me, and it looks like the only Raven defender reacting as if to go guard the running back is Chuck Clark, the safety from the other side of the field. And that doesn't even make sense. Um, you, I'll rewind it back a couple of times, and you guys can see it. Tell me if you see a different coverage uh, being called here. I'm not sure what to call it. To, to really dive deep here, I want to go back one play. So the play before Taylor's touchdown catch, they tried to isolate a Malik Harrison on Taylor to the other side of the field. Not a screen play, obviously. Just a little swing route. Very similar to a route that Chuck Clark covered uh, Nick Fant on against the Broncos up in Denver the week before where he had to climb over an out route by the number one receiver to the left-hand side of the field. This is very similar. Harrison gets himself in pretty good position. He's, he might be there an instant late, but it's a pretty good job by him, I think, of getting over that rub route or that pick route. Anyway, back to the screen. Looks like we're bringing five-man pressure here, and we've got man across the board. Someone's got to pick up the back. We're in a too-high safety situation, so one of those five guys has got to have a peel responsibility. So blitz peel means I'm blitzing the edge, but if someone tries to cross my face, i got to go with them. I can't let a back cross my face and get an easy, you know, an easy catch. This is a screen, but it just looks like a flare to the back. I believe these four guys are in man on the number one and two receivers to their side. There might be some question about Stevens up top, but to, but if you, I'm going to rewind it back here in a moment. You're going to see Chuck Clark's running before the ball's even thrown. So we have some difficulty. I don't know why Bowser's not responding to the screen at all. Or, and and uh, this is also related to the fact we have no inside linebackers on the field, and maybe that's related to the fact that we don't trust them at this point. Still, somewhere along the line, if it, if it is man, which I contend that it is, someone's got to be responsible for the backs. Someone's got to have eyes on them, and no one did. When we get the end zone angle, you'll see. I mean, this is very surprising to me because Ty Bowser is a really versatile player, very unique, if you ask me, a good edge rusher, good in pass drops, uh, good on all of our twist stunts, and, and Bowser just runs right by the football. Or, 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 and let, with no awareness to the back, if if Malik Harrison or Patrick Queen did this, you know, I'm, I feel bad saying this, it, it kind of wouldn't surprise me. It surprises me that Tyus Bowser did. And then we have no one out here on him. Uh, so maybe it's zone over here to the side, but it didn't look like it to me. So if you guys want to rewind it, and um, actually that was Tavon Young over the number two receiver, uh, not Brandon Stevens. If you guys want to rewind it and correct me on what you think the coverage is, go right ahead. I don't know if you guys are like me. It's kind of hard not to be frustrated watching the defense right now. All right, so here's a screen. This is in the third quarter, so we're going to pick up a possession in the third quarter to Colts go down and score just to show you that the screens are attacking everyone. Jimmy Smith had been switched over to the right side at this point after they had targeted Averett so much on that first third quarter drive. Now let's start to look at the run game. The Colts are in, I think it's 12 personnel. We've got our uh, we've got a weird defensive personnel look on the field. We got two inside linebackers, three interior D linemen, and one edge rusher in Owe, and we end up blitzing the the back side of this. One of our inside backers is Harrison. He's walked up as an edge guy. If you remember, he made a great play out of this look last week against the Broncos. I'm just not a real big fan of it because I think it stresses Patrick Queen too much. We've already established he's not reading well and fitting. Well, he blitzes the back side of this, so we motion they motion you know right to left on the screen. He blitzes away from it. Also, simultaneously, Chuck Clark is reading the H-back, which I'm going to rewind it so you can see it. That H-back steps away. We're in man, so Chuck goes with him. So we've got one inside linebacker, Harrison, lined up over there. The other inside linebacker, Queen, is blitzing the backside, and then we've lost Chuck Clark in terms of where the point of attack is because he's going with the H-back because it's man-to-man. -man. I'm not blaming the players. I'm really kind of blaming the scheme here, and, and I think you got to give some credit to the Colts for, for what they designed. And unfortunately, I'm not done. Uh, Averitt's playing man on the number one receiver, and he goes in like he's going to run a drag across. He's just blocking, essentially. And Averitt goes with him. So we've lost three guys at the point of attack. We've lost Clark, who went with the H-back, Queen, who blitzed the opposite side, and Averitt, who ran with his guy that he's assigned to guard man-to-man. -man. Um, our scheme is getting manipulated and taken advantage of. Here's another example. I know that everybody talks about reading guards. That's cool. Good. I think Harrison's reading this guard here. you got to do that sometimes, but not when it's one back. There ain't no other back for you to read. It's not going to be split flow. That guy's getting the ball if it's a run play, period. So we're stepping because we see the guard pull, and now we're outflanked. What outflanked means the running back is wider than Harrison. Look how they line up. Harrison's wider than him right now by a good three yards. So if it was a toss play, which it essentially is, Harrison can run with him even though that running back's faster. When he reads the guard and he steps down, 
Now he's outflanked, okay? And Justin Houston's stepping down because he thinks it could be some kind of run play away. He's getting inside release by the tackle. I mean, should they be reading the guards most of the time? Yes, but there's certain situations where they shouldn't. When you have to be the force player, there's one back there. I don't think you should be. Anyway, Queen, I think, is reading the triangle. He sees the pulling guard. Uh, his reaction's even worse. No awareness at all. He just sees the guard pull and takes off running. And teams are using that clearly against us again. Maybe not 10 times so far this year, but here's an example of where they've used that pulling guard read against our linebackers and just ran the flip toss the other way. I'm not necessarily cherry picking plays here. You know, uh, this is a this is a drive where they ran the ball. Okay, this is actually a pretty good job by Board. I think um, he sees a down block and he's the back to him, so he fills and he fits the outside of the guard to knock it back into the other inside linebacker or to the pursuing D lineman on the other side. So that, I think it's good. He takes the block on with his left shoulder, like you would if you're in in a nickel alignment, which we are. The problem I have is is how Patrick Queen fits this, and this shows a lack of trust. If you were watching film with him, that's what you would say is you don't trust your teammates because the way this works here, Board fits up this guard, okay? Outside of him, he's got Justin Houston who's setting the edge and doing a pretty good job. Board fits the guard. Board ends up essentially in the B gap, okay, a new B gap. Anytime there's a fullback inserted or a guard that pulls, you got a new gap that's created. So Board has B gap, a new guard is there, so he's created another gap. Houston's doing a good job. He's got C gap. Board's doing a pretty good job on this pulling guard who's a big guy. He's got B gap. Where should Queen fit? Obviously, it should be A, right? So we're going to rewind it again, and you see how indecisive he is and how passive I mean, he's reading well. He's, he sees the pulling guard. Cool. And he's staying square. Cool. But, like, that's the gap you got to fit in. That's a lack of trust because he's thinking that his teammates aren't going to do the job outside, so he may have to go outside. And, and you can say that I'm being a little picky, and on some level maybe I am, but that's not filling and defending the run. Once you see the pulling guard, if you think it's run, then go. Okay? Now, the previous play, he saw run what he thought was run away, and he went. So, I think there's some trust that's being eroded across all levels of our defense right now because teams are taking advantage of us. Okay, here's a great example of an offense getting lined up quick and snapping the ball. We're not ready yet. They're in an unbalanced set to the left-hand side of the screen here or left part of our defense, and it's just a little toss play. You see the, the tailback is even off, off center. He's off the midline. So it's kind of obvious where the ball is going in retrospect. Look, the Chargers ran this play too this week against the uh, Browns, just so you know. So here it is running it back in live speed. They have four blockers on the edge, a tackle, and then a bunch bunch set. And we have four defenders primarily to defend it. So anytime you're defending toss or pitch, you're talking about angles for your inside linebackers. And we all know our inside linebackers are struggling right now. Our inside linebackers overrun this. At least the front side guy, guy does. And it, it shouldn't be hard to guess who it is. Um, at this point, it's easy to call him out on these things. It's Patrick Queen. Now, he's going to have to take on a lineman if he, if he takes the correct angle, which should be like at a 45. He should basically be running – to fit either outside of the tackle or inside of the tackle who that Pernell McPhee is lining up on. It depends on where the back goes. You can see he's on the backside hip of the back right now. Okay, and there's a gap developing there, and Queen is where he should be. He's on the backside hip of the running back. And then as this develops, Queen overruns it. Uh, maybe a lack of trust. Now, he, granted, he's got a 340-pound man in his face, so he's going to have to take him on. But it cuts up inside of where Queen should have been. The structure of our defense has been compromised at this point. We're giving up 24 points a game, and, and it's coming in a variety of ways. But one thing to remember, and, and I have to remind myself, is we only gave up seven points last week in Denver, and that was a first-half touchdown. We shut them out in the second half. But we have the best offense that we'll face probably all year coming to Baltimore next week. And when I say the best offense, I mean, obviously the Chiefs are very talented, and the Raiders are talented too, and they scored a lot on us. But the Chargers look like the most consistent offense on film. I'm going to do a live stream tonight where we're going to go over at least two possessions of the Chargers. I'll probably do that around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me know what you guys think of this video and some of the points I made about the Ravens defense, uh, if I'm being too picky in some cases, or if you agree or disagree.